Welcome to Linked Up Kids. Thank you for viewing today. I'm excited about today's lesson where we will continue to learn about the kids in the Bible. The cool thing is they're kids just like you. And just like God used them, he wants to use you to do great things. So stay tuned. What I want you to do now is pray with me. Let's start the service. Everybody look up and look down. Lord, we come before you today thanking you and praising you for your presence. Thanking you, God, for another opportunity to praise you and to learn about you. Thank you, God, for showing us all that you'd have us to see today. Thank you for opening our spiritual eyes and ears to hear. And we give you all the praise and all the glory for today. In Jesus' name, amen. Jesus is the one who lights our way. Oh, 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 oh. He gives us hope for each new day. Oh, 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 oh. When the world feels dark and lonely, His love illuminates. He's the one I trust in. I will follow Him. He is the light that breaks through the dark. Howdy there, partner. I came here today so that we can learn this memory verse. Make sure you listen to these here lyrics. I'm going to sing them, and then I want you to sing them with me, all right? All right there, partner. Let me listen to this beat. All right, here we go. I can do all things through Christ. Who strengthens me? I can do all things through Christ. Who strengthens me? I can do all things through Christ. Who strengthens me? It's found in Philippians 4 and 13. All right, you guys heard me. I want you to join in on this next time around. All right. I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. It's found in Philippians 4 and 13. All right now, partner, you're sounding good.
Now I lay me down to sleep. I pray the Lord my soul to keep. Amen. Master? What is it? You called me? No, I didn't. Yes, you did. I heard you. No, I did not. Are you sure? Yeah, I'm pretty sure. Must have been a dream. Go back to bed, Samuel. Sorry to bother you. Good night. Good night. Sleep tight. Don't bite the bed bugs. Sir? Hmm? What did you want? Huh? I heard you calling me. Was I talking in my sleep? I don't think so. Huh, well, if I was, I'm sorry. I didn't call you. But I'm sure I heard you this time. Go back to bed, Samuel. Okay, good night. Good night, sleep tight. Don't bite the bed bugs. Sir? Come, come on. Sir, I heard you. I know I did. Samuel, the only thing I'm calling is sleep. Go to bed. Okay, then. Wait. Samuel, the next time you hear that voice, say, speak, Lord. Your servant is listening. Why? The Lord is talking to you, Samuel. But that's impossible. I'm just a kid. The Lord is calling you, Samuel, as he calls all of us. You've heard his voice. Now comes the important part. You need to listen. I will, Master. Thank you. Good night, Samuel. Sleep tight. Good night. Don't bite the bed bugs. Hi, boys and girls. How many of you guys can't wait until you get one of these? Do any of you have a phone? Or expecting to get a phone soon? You know what's coming up. How do you know that you are responsible enough to have a phone? Phones are a sign of growing up. When you get a phone, it shows everyone that you are ready. Your parents believe that you are ready to be responsible and you can take care of it. Your parents expect you to use your phone wisely. They also expect you to keep in touch with your family, your friends, and other people. And they expect you not to lose it. You must keep up with your phone. Phones allow you to get in touch with everyone you care about. Family, friends, I'm not going to mention video games, but you get to keep in touch with video games. But we don't need a phone to stay in contact with God. We can talk to God anytime. We can talk to him through prayer. We can talk to God when we read our Bible. You know, God can hear us anywhere and anytime. What's more, we can also hear from God through our prayers. And when we're reading the Bible, sometimes God will give us scripture that's right for him, right for us. God can speak to us. If we are still and willing to listen, we'll hear the voice and we'll find direction that God has for our lives. Even kids can hear from God. You don't need a phone to, have, to hear from God, and you don't have to go to a temple to hear from God. Learn to be quiet. Learn to be still and listen. And you'll hear God's still, small voice, and it will come through crystal clear. Where you go, I'll go. Where you stay, I'll stay. When you move, I'll move. I will follow. All your ways are good. All your ways are sure. I will trust you.
Have you ever watched the NFL Draft? It's a very long, kind of boring event that takes place in the spring. During the draft, all 32 NFL football teams take turns picking new players for their team. Each team gets a certain amount of time in which to make a choice. As soon as they do, the next team gets to make their pick and so on and so on. The NFL invites a select group of players to the draft to wait for their name to be called. But for every one player at the draft, there are a hundred at home sitting by the phone waiting for it to ring. They want their phone to ring and they want to hear the voice of an NFL coach telling them, congratulations, we want you to be on our team. You know what those guys don't want? A wrong number. They don't even want to call from a friend or family member during this time. They want to keep that phone line clear so that they don't miss a call from the Falcons or the Titans or the Texans or any other NFL team. As eager as those football players are on draft day to hear a call from an NFL team, God wants us to be listening for his voice. Believe it or not, God speaks to his people even today, giving them instructions and direction for their lives. The best part, part is that God doesn't just call to adults. He calls kids too. He calls to anyone willing to be still and listen so that he can teach them who he is and how they should live. Today, we're going to meet a boy who received a call from God. This boy grew up to be a prophet and an important leader in Israel. And it all started one quiet night when he was trying to sleep. Stories of the Bible. God speaks to Samuel. This is Samuel. Hi! Samuel was the son of Hannah. Hey, Samuel! Hannah prayed for God to give her a son, and God did. So Hannah gave Samuel back to God. See you, Samuel! Bye, Mom! 
and Samuel grew up in the temple serving under Eli, the priest. Hi, Eli. As Samuel grew up, he learned how to serve God from Eli. Samuel lived in the house of God, but he did not know God or what God's voice sounded like. In those days, messages from God were rare. <sighs> but one night after Eli had gone to bed, Samuel was sleeping in the tabernacle when suddenly God called out, Samuel! Huh? Samuel got up and ran to Eli and said, Did you call me? Not me. Eli said, I didn't call you. Go back to bed. So Samuel did. Then God called out again, Samuel. Huh? And again, Samuel got up and ran to Eli asking, Did you call me? Not me. Eli said, I didn't call you. Go back to bed. So Samuel did. God called Samuel for a third time, Samuel. And Samuel went to Eli yet again. Hmm. After three times, Eli realized that God was trying to speak to Samuel. So Eli taught Samuel to say, Speak, Lord. Your servant is listening. Okay. Samuel went back to bed, and God came and called as before, Samuel, Samuel. And Samuel said, Speak, your servant is listening. God told him many things about what would happen to Israel. As Samuel grew up, God was with him, and everything God spoke through Samuel came true. Samuel was seen as a great prophet of God because he could hear the voice of God, and he listened when God spoke to him. Samuel was a Nazarite a person whose life was dedicated fully to serving the Lord. His parents asked and prayed for a son. His mother promised she would dedicate him to the Lord and let him grow up in the temple. That's how Samuel came to be in the temple that night, sleeping down the hall from Eli. God didn't wait until Samuel was grown to let him know that he was special. He called him when he was only a boy. God used Samuel to tell Eli that he and his sons would be punished for their sins. Later on, God will use Samuel to anoint soil and then David as king of Israel. It all began one night while Samuel lay in bed. Samuel heard a voice and he answered, God is calling all of us today, waiting for us to answer. We need to learn to sit, be still, be quiet. If we learn to listen, then we can be like Samuel and know how to also obey. The biggest reason people do not hear God's voice is the same reason we sometimes don't hear other voices. We don't listen. Sometimes we tune out when our parents are telling us what to do. They tell us to be responsible, to clean our rooms, to do our homework. Teachers tell us about the same things. Be responsible, turn in your word, respect others. Well, when our parents and teachers tell us things and we don't listen, we can get into big trouble. If we're smart, we learn to listen and listen well so that we don't get into trouble. Failing to listen to God might not get you in trouble, but it will mean missing out. Missing out on the chance to serve the Lord, missing the opportunity to make choices that will draw us closer to God and allow us to participate in the good work he's doing here on earth. God made each of us unique and he has a role for us to play in the body of Christ. Only you can fill your role, but if you miss it, you may not get another chance. Don't miss your shot to serve the Lord. Don't shrug it off and put it off until adulthood. Ask God to speak to you today. Spend time alone praying in the quiet. God will speak to you and tell you what his plan is. He's waiting for you to say, like Samuel, speak, Lord, your servant is listening. Let's pray. Dear God, teach us how to be silent and how to listen so that we can hear your voice. In Jesus' name, amen. So today, we just heard a good message. You've learned a lot. We've learned to listen to the voice of God. 
If you want to know how you can hear God, say you've never asked him to come into your life, to live on the inside of you, you can do that today. I want you to close your eyes with me and say this prayer. Lord, thank you for the opportunity to ask you to come and live on the inside of me. We know, God, that you gave us Jesus as your son, that he came, he died on the cross, he was dead for three days, he rose, he walked around for 40 days, and then he ascended into heaven. Because we know that, Father, and we have faith in that, we thank you for coming and living on the inside of us and helping us to do life, to live our life the way that you would have us to. Thank you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. So, if you pray that prayer for the very first time and you just ask God to come and live on the inside of you to help you do life, we'd love to hear from you. Send us an email. Have your parents send us an email here at chouston at linkedupchurch.com. So take Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus. Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus. Numbers, Deuteronomy, and Joshua. Numbers, Deuteronomy, and Joshua. Judges, Ruth, first and second Samuel. Judges, Ruth, first and second Samuel. First Kings, second Kings, first and second Chronicles. First Kings, second Kings, first and second Chronicles. Ezra, Nehemiah, Esther, Job, and Psalms. Ezra, Nehemiah, Esther, Job, and Psalms. Proverbs, Ecclesiastes, Song of Solomon. Proverbs, Ecclesiastes, Song of Solomon. Isaiah, Jeremiah, and Lamentations. Isaiah, Jeremiah, and Lamentations. Ezekiel, and Daniel, Hosea, and Joel. Ezekiel, Daniel, Hosea, and Joel. Amos, Obadiah, Jonah, and Micah. Amos, Obadiah, Jonah, and Micah. Nahum, Habakkuk, and Zephaniah. Nahum, Habakkuk, and Zephaniah. Haggai, Zechariah, and Haggai, Zechariah, and Malachi. That is the old. That is the old. Let's begin the new. Let's begin the new. Matthew, Mark, Luke, Luke, and John. John. Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. Acts and Romans, 1st and 2nd Corinthians. Acts, Romans, 1st and 2nd Corinthians. Galatians, Ephesians, Philippians. Galatians, Ephesians, Philippians. Colossians, 1st and 2nd Thessalonians. Thessalonians. Colossians, 1st and 2nd Thessalonians. 1st and 2nd Timothy, Titus Philemon. 1st and 2nd Timothy, Titus Philemon. Hebrews, James, 1st and 2nd Peter, 1st John. Hebrews, James, 1st and 2nd Peter, 1st John. Second John, third John, Judah Revelation. Revelation. Second John, third John, Judah Revelation. Woo! It's the most exciting time of service. It is offering time. And God loves the heart of a cheerful giver. So let's dig deep and sow into the glory of God. If you'd like to give, please list at the link below and give to linkedupchurch.com slash give.
church hat clap Man, that sugar gave her color purple Coming back clap, uh When that whole week beat you up and stress you But you hear that organ playing And remind you of your blessings And on another note She just hit another note Chills by my spine, got me crying Make me overload You don't know about it though Old school church ham seekers Get the humming out of drum up in the first end Lord, Lord, Lord Can you hear me now? Church close, swear they don't care You just get it now Testify how we made martyrs Out of these fathers And rose up all of his daughters To glorify him with honor Yeah. Preach the gospel and stand back. Look for change, lie. 